Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection. Uh, today I want to talk about uh, the work of Lauren Ferrier. Uh, Lauren Ferrier is, 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 is a third generation watchmaker. His grandfather and father were both uh, watchmakers. And he worked at Patek Philippe for 37 years before he started his own company in 2008. If that rings a little bell that says, hey, that sounds familiar, the same was true with um, Philippe Dufour. He worked at uh, Paddock Philippe for a number of years before he went off on his own. One of the interesting things is that uh, he was a race car driver. It was more of a hobby. I mean, here he was working at Paddock Philippe, and when he had some time, he'd go out and race cars. And in uh, 1979, uh, he and his two other people that they were, is a 24-hour race, uh, came in third. Uh, the more famous person came in second with his team, and that was Paul Newman in 79. Uh, anyway, um, the important thing about that, the, the gentleman that was one of his racing partners was Francois Severin. And uh, Severin in was an industrialist and had been knew the talent that uh, Lauren Farae had and was trying to cop, talk him into starting his own company. Well, it took him about 30 years, but he eventually did it in uh, 2008. And uh, one of the main uh, financial bankers was Francois Sevenin. Okay, well, so that's sort of the the background. Now, one of the things about racing was that race car drivers are very interested in the mechanics of their machines. And so there was this interest in mechanics that was passed over to perfectionism in watchmaking. Now, if you're going to win races, uh, perfectionism is a, is a good thing. The same thing is true in making wonderful watches. And he made a lot of wonderful watches for Paddock Philippe as well. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, some of the major accomplishments of, of uh, Lauren Ferre. Probably the one of the most important is called a Tourbillon uh, Double Hairspring. Uh, I put a little picture of it up there. And you may remember, if, if you saw the video that we had on Mos uh, H. Moser, that he also had used a double hairspring. And the reason was that the two hairsprings in opposite shifts uh, would keep everything in center of pivot for the uh, balance wheel. Okay, well, what Ferre did, he took it one step further and connected it up with a tourbillon. Now, one of the things that uh, you might notice there is that there are no, it doesn't end with a, a Breguet overcoil, but you just have those little knobs on the end. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, and this is, there's a series, the first series I want to take a look at, it's called the uh, Galet Classic. And so this is an example of a Galet Classic, and inside of it is this uh, Turbion double hairspring. Uh, and, and in uh, 2010, they won a Grand Prix d'Orologie, the men's uh, category. Now, men's category is one of those categories. You went in the men's, you really won something. The reason that it's important is that so many watchmakers put top-notch uh, watches into that category. There are, there are a few categories like that, and the men's is uh, certainly one of them. In the same uh, sense... What they have is these wonderful <laughs> images that are labeled of their movements. Now, if you go to the uh, Fer uh, the Laurent Ferre uh, website, uh, you can get all of these. You can download them. They're really they're one thing about their website I really like. And at the bottom down there, you can see the tourbillon. Now, if you the if you can see the escapement there. Uh, notice that it has those, I, I call them bear claw uh, teeth on the thing. 
uh, that sort of are sticking out. And I, I mentioned that uh, as important because it'll be a reference later on. I'll be uh, talking about another uh, fantastic thing that uh, Ferry has done. So that's where the, uh, but beneath all of that is where you're, you have your double uh, balance spring tourbillon. Okay, within the, uh, the, the, the watches that have the double hairspring, the double tourbillon, tourbillon double hairspring, there are two other ones other than just the regular uh, Gallic uh, classic. One is the classic, what's called the classic dual, and it's called dual because you can, you can see the tourbillon from the front. If you turn it over, you can see it from the back, so you can see, see the tourbillon on both ends. The other one is called the classic scare, the Galay scare square, the Galay classic square, and it's just a it's just another design that uses that same movement. Okay, uh, now a second really incredible movement that <laughs> that came out of of um, Ferrier is called the Galay micromotor natural escapement. And the natural escapement is something from Breguet. Uh, Breguet made, oh, I think, maybe 20 of them, something like that. Very small number. They're fairly interesting, <laughs> very challenging. Look at that very carefully, and you'll notice again, you don't see the typical escapement wheel with, those, with the bear claws hanging off of them. Instead, the, they just look like um, you can't see them at all. In fact, in that picture, it's pretty small. Uh, so, so let's talk a little about the um, Galay micromotor uh, natural escapement. And here is a diagram of one. This isn't the one in Fourier. This is a, a more general one I got. And the, 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 the top wheel up there is the balance wheel. And then below the balance wheel, you have these these two escape wheels. And they have fairly standard looking teeth. And they have a number of pegs on them. And the pegs are for, for stopping and starting uh, with the unlocking pallet. And then in the middle, you have the detent. So this is the type of a detent escapement. And the reason, if you remember, is because they're trying to reduce friction. And by reducing friction, they increase accuracy because there's not these, the same amount of interaction that was likely to throw things off. Also, too, this is a way to reduce the number of services that something needs, okay? Because the less friction, it's not going to wear out any kind of lubricant that you had. Now, remember, when Breguet did this, the lubricants were pretty bad. Uh, today, they, they got really good lubricants, <laughs> so it's not quite the same problem. But it's an interesting thing with mechanical uh, watches. Now, the, the natural escapement, is used on a number of watches, and it's used in conjunction with the Galay micro rotor. Okay, it's called the Galay micro rotor escapement. In 2015, the uh, the watch, the, the square version. It's just the square is one of the versions that they have. The square version of the uh, Galay micro rotor won a Grand Prix. Uh, this time it won something called the Orological Revelation. And I, I think it's uh, the revelation was that this is something Breguet had done quite some time ago, and Laurent Ferrier figured out how to bring it back. Now, there, here is where you have most of the models. You have a 40 millimeter and a 39 millimeter. If you if you look at it, the brown one and then the uh, dark blue one in the middle on the top is a 39, is almost, a, it reminds me of a Moser, very, very clean, almost nothing on it, uh, on the 39 millimeter. And if you compare that to 40 millimeter, which has all of the hour markers plus the um, small seconds at the bottom, which is a very typical kind of thing. Uh, one of the more interesting ones is called the uh, Montreux Ecole, 
which is a school watch. And it's, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure, it was maybe when uh, Ferrier was a student, he built such a spectacular watch that he thought, well, heck, I can just <laughs> bring it out again. It was <laughs> no sense wasting it. It's the square, I mentioned the square already. Now, one of the more interesting ones is the Régulateur, and our regulator. Uh, this one has a single hand, and it's a minute hand that goes around the watch. And then the, it has the uh, hour hand in the uh, top, the subdial at the top, and then another small seconds uh, subdial at the bottom. Uh, there's one version of that. By the way, too, the 40 millimeter, the 39 millimeter, and the square come in a lot of different dial uh, styles on those. Okay, the uh, another one I really like, and this is set in a category, separate category. The movement is almost identical. It's a micro rotor with a natural escapement, but it has a couple of other functions in it, so that to set the uh, these are dual time. Uh, there's a regular one, and then there's one with an enamel. Uh, uh, dial on it that's that's they have a lot of different kinds of things you can choose from i like the uh the traveler with the blue blue green uh on the left a lot uh anyway that's the traveler micro rotor natural escapement that's the same escapement that won the prize <laughs> okay one of this this one is the other uh, main one that uses the uh, turbion, uh, they call it turbion double spiral, turbion double hairspring, a lot of different names for it. This one is so really interesting because what it is, uh, they call it the uh, Galet secret. The secret is, is that they have like a, uh, the, the one on the left you can see is all, it just sort of looks like a sort of highly stylized dial with all of the um, hours in, in Roman numerals. And the one on the right, uh, you see this dragon. Well, it using uh, sapphires, they have that brings it around to 240 de uh, degrees. So there's sort of a fan opens up, and you see what's uh, below there. A lot of these are this the green dragon is a miniature painting. They've got just incredible stuff. On that, and again, that uses that turbion uh, double spiral. The last one is called the Lady F for Lady Ferrier, and it, it has a mother of pearl dial, and, and it also uses the micro uh, rotor uh, natural escapement on it. They have it in this blue, and then they have sort of a golden brown one too. Uh, and so, I mean, there aren't a lot of them. It's not, which is pretty much the case with a lot of watchmakers. Anyhow, uh, so that's the, the two lady models. They're both of them are, are really incredible <laughs> carving on, on mother of pearl. Now, the final thing I want to talk about is just the, the incredible finishing. The on laws and the beveling, uh, I mean, there are even bevels on the spokes of the wheels, of the gear wheels. And then there's this rounded beveling on the, um, on the different plates and bridges and so forth. These things, I mean, the, <laughs> I, I, one of the reasons I think that the, 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 um, the glass on the back of the watch is as big as the one on the front. There's so much to see. <laughs> They're really beautifully done. Uh, here's another example of black polish. Black polish is something that you put on uh, your your steel parts, and it just they, they they look fantastic. Now remember, these are all waterproof sealed, so once it's done, uh, they stay that way for for a very long time. Fantastic uh, watches. They are expensive. The they start around forty thousand dollars, and I think there may be one that's thirty-five. I'm not positive on that, but uh, these watches are really what 
your exceptional horology looks like. These are above high horology. They only make a couple hundred of them a year. And I think there are like 10 people who work um, with uh, Laurent Ferrier. But the, it's, they're really spectacular for a truly hand, everything, hand finished, hand made. These watches are, are on the same level as uh, F.P. Jorn and um, Philippe Duf, uh, Dufour, uh, Roger Smith. This, these are just very, very much top drawer watches. Well, anyway, love to hear your opinion on it, what you have to say, what you think about it. And if you like, this is an invitation to subscribe. And so I'll be seeing you on Sunday, I hope. Uh, we're having another collection review. We may have a double one. And uh, until then, uh, this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Side, the art and science of watch collection.